Greetings, salutations, and welcome to the Krieger Cast. I'm your host, Patrick Krieger, and I'm joined once again by Matt. What's going on? Today, uh, we have our beverage of choice is 3030's blend of Earl Grey Moonlight. I don't know if it's our beverage of choice. Well, it was my beverage of choice. Um, <laughs> after last uh, the last podcast with uh, Daryl and Stephanie, yeah. I... I have to share this with those closest to me. I so appreciate that. I, I wanted you to try this before I ran out. And since the bag got opened, uh, you know. Smoke them if you got them. Yeah, basically. it's This is all the tea we're drinking until uh, it's used up. Now, you apparently did not listen well enough to the podcast on the tea. No. Because, had you known, you wouldn't have taken a sip of this as fast as you did. Oh, yes. Uh, I was loosely following uh, that podcast, and I, like I said earlier, I only got like 70% through it. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if I missed something or if I didn't listen to it yet. Now, well, that's possible. That's possible. But as per 3030's instructions, this tea is brewed and served at 210 degrees. Oh, my God. Uh, Exactly. We are listening to you, 3030 people. I'm not. Also. I consume on (laughs) after four. I was like, ah, so hot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was was, uh, mildly funny. Uh, You're supposed to uh, sit and enjoy the the fragrance of the tea. The aroma. um, The aroma while looking longingly into the liquid which you cannot consume currently. What a a tease. (laughs) Ah, I made that joke. (laughs) <laughs> um I reached real deep and to get that one <laughs> also uh dear listeners uh matt and i uh went to kabuki for dinner tonight yes and near our kabuki there was a pete's coffee so i decided to stop in and see if they had some of their ancient trees poor tea as their website currently says they are out of stock and they do they do they do have it and it is for sale right now for between $22 and $24 per tin. Uh, and that's a tin of four ounces. Um, so run. Do not walk to your nearest Pete's coffee. Um, in addition, I do have a correction to make to the tea episode. Uh, I said that one of my favorite teas was that of Fortnum and Mason's Lady Grey. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. Apparently, that is the incorrect name. Their name is, for that T, Countess Grey. So. Similar. It, it is similar, but if one were trying to procure the tea from the Fortnum and Mason's tea bar, you would look yeah. the fool. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> tea is not my world. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some uh, Black Rifle coffee and I'm good. So, uh... Dear listener, uh, that catches you back up to speed on the tea situation. I'll keep you close abreast to the situation as uh, it develops. So when or, can I drink this? Uh, as soon as you can. Uh, it's up to you. Oh, it just um, it was the, the hot factor. How how, re- how like soon do you want to be able to taste something again? Well, I mean, I could taste anything right now. I didn't burn myself. Ah, okay. So. Well, well, bear in mind that it is at 210 degrees, so I tend to uh, give it a few minutes. Oh, let it get on the cooler end. Yes, uh, uncomfortably room temperature. Oh, yes, I prefer that. That's the scientific uh, nomenclature for that. So, today, uh, in the spirit that this podcast was founded... Oh, uh, which was to record the stories of my friends and I and our adventures. Matt and I are going to do something which we've been waiting a little while to do, which is talk about our road trip. Yes. You and I did what, for all intents and purposes, was nearly a perfect road trip of the United States. Nearly, yeah. Absolutely. It was phenomenal. We went to 47 states over a period of almost three months. Three months. Yeah, it was two oh, months oh, and yeah, a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeez, you forgot about that. Wow. Yeah, we lived on the road out of my car for nearly three months. We left here uh, about a week after you got out of uh, high school. Yeah, twenty ten. 
And we didn't get back until like three weeks before we had to go back to school. What did, what did we do? We did a lot. We did do a lot. So let's start with the first night. Oh God. So we decided to go. Well, let's let's talk about let's talk about the preamble. The as preamble. It were. Okay. Um, do you remember when we went to the uh, Automobile Club of America? Uh, yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I lied. Uh, maybe. Okay. So. Uh, the, is that with the bug? Like we we drove the bug? Probably because I was driving a Volkswagen at the time. Let's start off with the fact that we we pulled out a map of the United States. Yes. And we took a piece of string and put that string between all the points we wanted to go on the map and then measured that and compared it to the scale of the map to get a rough idea of how far we were going to go and it was something like 10,000 miles yeah. minimum. Minimum. Yep. Uh, because we were doing this kind of strange zigzagging things, we we pointed out things we wanted to do, like uh, we wanted to drive the Key Highway. Yes. We wanted to go to Roswell. Yes. Uh, we from wa- Vegas. From Vegas. Um, we Richmond. Wa- we wanted to see Richmond, but that was a subset of wanting to go to the hundredth anniversary of Boy Scouts in America. Well, I mean that's where it was. Yes. Yes, it was in Virginia, yeah. Fort A. P. Hill, Virginia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we stayed in Richmond. Yeah. Um, dear listener, uh, Matt and I's friendship has been nearly constant while we were in scouts together, but one of the things that really solidified our friendship was this uh, trip to the 100th anniversary of Boy Scouting in the world, uh, where we went to England together, and that is, as they say, another show. But we decided to bring back some of those memories and put them to, uh add to them as it were to go to the 100th anniversary of boy scouts in the united states so that was what the original intent of the road trip was yep so we had this plot of points we wanted to go to on the map a plethora a cornucopia if you will (laughs) and we went to the AAA and said can you give us a triptychs oh yeah that was a fiasco and a half they said give us a week yep (laughs) let's go ahead and burn down the amazon creating all these books for you yeah, we ended Jeez. up with like three boxes. Yeah. Like three book boxes that full of triptychs. Crazy. Yeah. So much literature I'd never read. Yeah, I don't think we ever looked at that again. Nope. We just <laughs> left them in the boxes and said, good day, sir, and went on our merry way. <laughs> we did bring them with, though. Oh, yeah. Extra weight. Got to slow down the car and, <laughs> you know, break down that fuel mileage. Hmm. So, since you were at the time driving, uh,. A, was it lifted at the time, Ford Bronco? 2010? No. Um, Stock Ford Bronco. It was, well, yes. Ooh, you had that one, like, massive bumper on the front. I had a bumper. I, you know, it was a... Yes, Jeff's your Bron- car had a bumper. Yes, it had a Jeff's Bronco uh, graveyard. Uh, I don't know if there's a another name for it. And just a normal bumper, not, you know, didn't have the push bar or anything like that. But I added a winch. It was... Oh, it was wooden. not a normal bumper. This thing was like the size of a Volkswagen. It was a quarter inch thick steel and about like 7,000 pounds. And it like was... an additional quarter inch of chrome. Yeah, it was chrome lined. I don't know why we did that. God, I missed that bumper. <laughs> we still have it. I no, I sold it. I sold it. We sold it. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. That dude in that pickup. That dinky little pickup. I think it was like an old Toyota. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, was like could oh, yeah, the car like... carry it? Yeah. I was like, I could lift this and put it in there, but I don't think your truck's going anywhere. <laughs> oh, man. I missed that bumper. It, you know, to be honest, I don't because it was so <laughs> heavy. And it was just... It was just so massive. I remember the way your uh, car started tilting up in the front end after that. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely... It immediately. Full-on bro status. You know, leaning back. It was... A significant difference. It was. Uh, I was like, "Wow, that that really was pretty heavy." <laughs> <laughs> so, needless to say, we weren't going to take this uh, 1993 Correct. Uh, Ford Bronco around the country. So we decided we were going to take my Charger, which my Charger unloaded got 25 plus miles per gallon on the highway. So we figured that would be pretty reasonable. It's safe, fuel efficient, comfortable, and um, great touring vehicle. Yes, a fantastic GT car. Uh, 
a 2006 Dodge Charger RT, the meanest thing on the road back in 2006. I, you know, I, I don't say that sarcastically. Hey, you know, I ain't, I ain't making fun of you. Uh, I had I, a blast in it. So, we left. Yes. And uh, we left on a southerly route. Yes. I believe our first night stay was in New Mexico. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um... We stayed at the Budget Inn. That's right. We got in there late, though. Yes. And that was real late, because we did, we did like, I think lunch in Vegas? Yeah, I think we stopped in Vegas for lunch. Yeah. And then we had the rest of the time to get to, you know, uh, Roswell, so, or wherever. Um, yeah, it was the Budget Inn. That was sketchy. Yes. The building shook when the rail, or when the, the train drove by. No, not even when just the trains drove by. Dear listener, imagine this, if you will. Your two California kids, to whom uh, earthquakes are a way of life. Yes. And you're laying in bed at night. And you look up at your cinder block walls, which are, mind you, bare cinder blocks. And every time a truck went by on the road, they would sway noticeably. Oh, yeah. It was strange. Which is where we coined the term, um, being a parody of the Budgets Inn's phrase of budget place. It's a nice place to stay. It's not a nice place to stay. We said what? I don't remember. Uh, oh god, I don't remember. Budget Inn. It's a nice place to die. Oh yes, 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 <laughs> yes. The, uh, the PTSD is coming back. No, um... <laughs> There were cockroaches. There were cockroaches. The buildings moved. It moved. <laughs> it had more movement than some of my joints. Like it was mm. bad. It was. It was a good place to go and die. Truly, and I'm I'm glad we came up with that because I'm sure they coined it after. Yeah, that was interesting, and we did find out that Budget Inn is a chain. Oddly enough, That's we thought that was a one-off store yeah. at first. So the next morning, do you remember what we did? Uh, I remember waking up and I remember driving after that. I don't remember in between. Okay, so we got a real late start because, uh, remember we were... We were out late, yeah. Yeah, and we were still kind of going off my schedule where, uh, I like to drive at night. Yeah. And so we got a late start, which meant there was a store open in town, so we were able to walk to it. There was a funky little antique store and i remember two distinct things about this antique store one he had solid silver kachinas oh yeah Yeah. Um, i had nothing to say about that at the time i don't think no i don't think you cared too much uh listener uh for those of you who don't know a kachina is a native american work of art i think mostly navajo but don't quote me on that uh, normally carved from wood depicting uh, specific dancers in their uh, regalia. Yeah. This man had uh, 6 to 12 inch tall, beautifully hand-worked silver kachinas that he wanted, like, I say this funnily, but like only $1,000 for, when at the time they were almost $1,000 in silver. Yeah. Um. He also had a presidential peace medal. I remember that. Yeah. Um, the There were these peace medals uh, given out at different times by like Lewis and Clark and so on and so forth uh, to symbolize peace between uh, the United States government and the Native Americans, um, depending on which tribe and all that. And he had one of these, and it was not for sale, but I tried to buy it off the man. He didn't know what it was. I felt like a jerk because I did. He just knew that it was rare. <laughs> well, I mean, that's his fault. You know, he's selling it. Yeah, he was a nice old man. Yeah. But then we, we got on the road. Truly. And our next stop, Sonic. Tell us about your experience at Sonic. Because I remember your experience at Sonic vividly. Why am I drawing a blank on Sonic? Probably, as you said, the PTSD. God. You did get exactly... Well, actually, no. You didn't get what I told you to get. You specifically went like, yeah, okay, what you're talking about is okay, but I'm going to order this. 
And I'm like, no, you don't want that. And you, uh, you regretted it. You had rag rats. Rag ra- oh, oh my god. Um, yeah, no, I honestly don't remember the, that, that Sonic. I remember I just, everything from, like, Texas on. Where what happened before that? So I, I was trying to talk you into getting jalapeno poppers and some chicken. And you were like, no, man, I want a burger. Well, yeah, that sounds about right. Maybe a hot dog. Yeah. But definitely a burger. 100%. And you ate it. Yes. You got, like, a third of the way through it. And you're like, this is trash. And then you get food poisoning all day. Oh my god. And then you were just not having it the rest of the day. No matter what we did, you were just uncomfortable and didn't want to do it. Yeah. That was a bad time in my life. Those those hours after that. And you said never again. Never again. And I don't think I ever went. Yeah, I don't think you've ever been back to a Sonic. I definitely have never given them money. I jokingly said we should go to Sonic uh, multiple times after that. And... Uh, You've never wanted to go. It's just so ingrained in your being now. Yeah, it's uh, down to my core. <laughs> yes. Uh, so. Uh, Jeez, that was a bad time. Just FYI, to those of you who are uninitiated in Sonic, uh, they have amazing drinks. Go there, get yourself a slushy, get yourself something iced. Fantastic. Avoid the ice cream. Go to yourself. Uh, Go get yourself a Dairy Queen instead, um, and avoid any of their normally cooked items. <laughs> um, yeah, the rest of the menu. Well, no, if it's fried, it's okay. Yeah, jalapeno poppers, all that. The jalapeno poppers are pretty good. Their chicken is ho-hum, but uh, it won't make you violently ill the way this burger did, my poor friend. Yes. Never again. So then what did we do? We were in Roswell at this point because that's where the Sonic was. Um, didn't we do the whole you know Roswell experience? You know, went to a couple places. I think we went to a old like demilitarized uh, vehicle spot or saw one. So we did two things, and I can't remember in which order we did these. Uh, we went to a little Ailey in gift oh, shop. Oh yes, 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 yes. We went to like uh, not the little Ailey Inn. No, we which went is a hotel. Something like with a bird it was we have dinner i I don't remember where we had dinner but it was ufo shaped the store we went to oh yeah yeah, that was a weird one but the big event of the day is we went to the international ufo museum yes that was cool yeah um that was uh that was kind of cool it was very short yeah Uh, they made it originally we just wanted to go to the gift shop because i kind of knew what was in store uh because i looked into it but they made you pay to go to the gift shop yeah yeah, so we figured we might as well go see the rest of the museum at that point. So there really wasn't too much more to the uh, Roswell Alien Museum. You kind of have to stop. You have to see it. Yeah, it's 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 kind of mandatory. But there wasn't much to it. It was a lot of pictures. Yeah, I'm sure like you know people have, like gone off searching in nowhere to find Area 51 or whatever, but. You know, but that's Nevada or whatever, right? Well, that yeah, that is in Nevada, I think, uh, Groom Lake. But they did have some wreckage. They said that was from the Roswell incident. Yeah, like a couple little shards of metal, and they did have um, a mock-up of an alien autopsy scene. That's so weird. So it, it was it was a little kitschy. That was very kitschy. You know, it was. You have to, but never again. If you go to Roswell, why else are you there except to see the International UFO Museum? Exactly. So, uh, enjoy it for what it is. Exactly. So then, uh, then uh, we headed towards Texas. Yes. That was a whole lot of driving. A whole lot of sandstorms at the time. Oh yeah, we went through a haboob. What? <laughs> <laughs> I adored that long pause. Uh, sandstorms in the deserts of New Mexico and Arizona are called haboobs. All right. Some people call, say haboo to not sound politically incorrect. But, yeah. I wonder where that's derived, derived from. Uh, sum- presumably a Native American word. Hmm. So when was the first night that I made you stay up all night? 
Was that after Texas? Was that in Louisiana? I think that was in Louisiana. Yeah, yeah I think it was in Louisiana. Or Mobile. Uh, yeah, it was because we were, we drove through Mobile. And I think we're just approaching, like, you know. Then we'll get to it later. Yeah. So our next stop was Texas. San Antonio, to be specific. We were going there to see the Alamo. Yes. When did we get there? Oh, probably like 9.30 at night. Oh, I thought it was later than that. For some well, reason, no, I like the, 1 in the morning. Oh, no. All the restaurants were open still. What? Um, there was only one open, as far well, as I remember. It was, well, I mean, I think it was during the week. So that's why mm. they were closed. Um, but, like, we got there at, like, 9.30, 10 o'clock, around there. Oh, okay. And then we were still able to sit and get, you know, get in the, I think we were at the Rockstar, or the Rock, uh, Rock and Roll Hall, or... We were not at the uh, the Hard Rock Hard Rock, it wasn't at no. the Hard Rock? So we did go to a Hard Rock Cafe. We went to a couple Hard Rock Cafes, uh, one of which was in Florida. But um, we did go to the Hard Rock Cafe in San Antonio to pick up a shirt. Yes. we didn't eat there. Because remember, what whenever we got there, everything was closed except bars. The only yes. the only place serving food was that weird little Mexican joint and the Riverwalk. Yes, and that is a definite go to. Yeah, that place was pretty good. Uh, well, I mean, I'm just saying the Riverwalk. Right oh now. yes, the Riverwalk was amazing. phenomenal. I mean, even at the time of night that we were there, uh, it was hot, but it was and it was humid, but it was definitely a fun time. Very very beautiful, awesome. Very, you know, a lot of cool shops along the way, bars, you know, restaurants and what have you. But very, very cool looking. Very aesthetically pleasing. And we did get to see the Alamo. We yes. didn't get to go in it, though. No, it was closed. But there were still tons of people walking around all over the place over there. Until. Remember, we had the river walk to ourselves at the end of the night. Yes, it, it got late. We were there for a while. Yeah. I was under the impression we were there from, like, midnight to, uh, to like, three, but... I guess we were there from like nine to like two or three. Yeah, thereabouts. It, we we didn't leave until like around three. It was yeah. when everyone was gone. Yeah, everyone. There was, uh, the crew was cleaning up the Mexican joint, going to bed, and there was another bar at one end of the the river walk that was closing up, and that was it. Everything yeah. else was dark. Yeah, it was a ghost town at that point. It, it like there was a ton of people, and then like like that, I'll self incriminate. So, um, <laughs> so we walked around the river walk and, uh, we found, um, I think they call it a highball glass on the river walk mm -hmm. that had a shot of whiskey and a cigarette in it. Yeah, that was, that was cool. We kept it. Yeah. I don't know why. I still to this day use it as an air plant pot. Hey, you know, whatever works. Yeah. It works for that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the best part of the evening happened. God, so we got lost. We got lost in San Antonio at three in the morning. That was a bad time to be lost in and, San Antonio. And the only thing we knew is we parked in a publicly available parking lot where we could see a, a particular sign from that lot. Yes. That you could see from like half the city. Yeah, it became <laughs> very difficult. Mind you, we weren't even drinking and wow. we were... Just lost and confused and tired, slightly worried, mostly tired physically, because we had been walking for several hours at this point. Yeah, yeah. It was it was hard on the old the old feet. And then someone found us. Yes, this homeless man <laughs> who took advantage of us. Took advantage mostly of you, but yes. I would have been in your same situation had I been able to. Financially taken advantage of us yes uh, oh god how did the dialogue i don't remember the dialogue at all i just know that he helped us out what happened was he said hey you guys look lost what are you looking for what an astute observation gentlemen and uh we said yes we're looking for our car we have no idea where it is and he says i could help you for a price yes and his price was like five bucks we said, okay, yeah, we'll pay you five bucks for that. Yeah. And he said, tell me what, what, what could you see when you parked? And so I told him as much as I could remember about where we parked. And he's like, that's one of like three or four different lots. So I'll take you to all three or four. And now actually thinking back on it, maybe he was just going to take us to those three or four lots right from the beginning. Yeah. But he did seem to genuinely try to help us. 
You know, he wasn't... I mean, we made it out. I he mean, wasn't he, scary. He, wasn't, he was homeless, yeah. but he wasn't scary. He was homeless, he was weird, but he wasn't, He wasn't like... There were no red flags. Like, yeah. He was totally, like, just... Uh, he happened to be homeless, he happened to be out there, and he happened to have helped us. Yeah. And he did eventually lead us back to our car, at which point I had no cash on me, so Matt was the one who was going to pay him, mm-hmm. and we realized we didn't have $5. Nope. And he saw that you had more than that in your wallet. Yes, he did. So, describe to us how that situation went down. (sighs) Well, like I said, I don't remember the dialogue with this guy, but I do remember him being very interested in everything I had in my wallet. He never threatened you. No, but but he he... definitely made it interesting. His (sighs) mannerism completely changed. Yeah, I remember. He got aggressive. Yeah, it was a light switch. Yeah, it was very, very sudden. And in the the pursuit of well-being, yes, uh, I elected to give the man his money and be on our merry way. If I'm not mistaken, it was either... 40 or 50 bucks it was it was 40 bucks yeah so a small price to pay to get out with you know not being shanked not being shanked (laughs) not being shot who knows what he had who knows what his capabilities were so he might have had an edged weapon he might have but you know we made it out unscathed we did tired but unscathed 40 dollars less and 40 dollars lighter you know low weight high speed I speed low drag, baby. <laughs> so, uh, at that point, we headed out of Texas. Um, I don't think we did much of anything else in Texas. No, no, it was just mostly driving yeah. in Texas. And then... Uh, it was a lot of night driving, because I distinctly remember the uh, dual speed limits day and night. Yeah. Which was kind of interesting. Yeah, very weird. Yeah. I didn't... I've never seen that before or since. No. So, yeah. Take that for what you will. Yeah, they had like a night driving speed that was like 20 miles an hour lower than their day driving speed, which makes, makes sense. sense. But <laughs> <laughs> it was it was just a little unusual. Yeah. So we drove and eventually we got to a point where I needed to sleep, but it was too hot to leave the car off. So uh, I volunteered Matt to do something. Yes, we pulled into a truck stop and not a truck stop as in a rest like, area. Yeah, it was a rest area off the side of a highway. And so we, you know, in the pursuit of keeping cool, we left the AC on overnight. Which meant the car had to idle. Which means someone had to stay vigilant. To make sure it didn't explode. To make sure it didn't (laughs) explode. (laughs) That's the way I sold you on it. Make sure we don't die. And that's when I realized that sleep is no longer a interest of mine <laughs> i threw on something for you on the dvd player yeah it was like best of stephen colbert or something like and that. you know what i think i finished it and yeah, i was did. just yeah it was a weird time i it was a very weird time i i i, I, think I, de- <laughs> I developed like a weird like because i've got i think i went on like 24 hours plus with no sleep yeah and I just, I started just like observing people. Yeah, you saw some interesting things happen. Oh yeah, there are a ton of weirdos that pull up into a truck stop overnight and do various acts throughout the area. Very odd, very strange. Don't recommend stopping at a truck stop and hashtag not sponsored. Yeah, and staying up all night. Definitely (laughs) fall asleep and just (laughs) Just don't don't think about it. Don't create memories. (laughs) Yeah. I, uh, eventually overnight, you know, I, I got out of the car, walked around, ma- ma- you know, did a good little look over of the car. Um, and then, uh, you know, just walked around like the bathroom, went to the bathroom, you know, came back, was, you know, pretty much just scoping the car from afar to make sure no one was like trying to like poke their head in. Saw a drug deal take place. Oh yes. Yep. Saw many drug deals take place. Oh, I thought it was only the one. Oh no. There was... There were very, there were a lot of people going into a lot of different vehicles and then walking out with a bag or something. There, that's apparently a hot truck stop to go to to do drugs. Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, that was that night. That was a night. That was, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever been the same. 
No, actually, I, I don't think so. Yeah. So then... I mean, this whole trip, but yeah. Our next goal is New Orleans. So I wanted some New Orleans seafood. Yes, that was a fun time. And to see Bourbon Street. Yeah. Or was it? Was it a fun time, Matt? Well, it was... It was... <laughs> It was a weird time, for sure. It was odd. I feel like a lot of this trip ends with, oh yeah, I had a great time, but yeah, Matt got attacked. Yeah. It, <laughs> God. That was that was my first time in New Orleans. Uh, likewise? Kinda? My my mom was pregnant with me when uh, she went to New Orleans once, so okay. I don't know if that counts. Well, I guess it does. Okay. So, yes, uh, we went and we got, uh, we decided we were in a park and walk around uh, the city. And we actually, uh, I wanted to see if there was any stuff left over from Katrina, which yeah. uh, this road trip took place in 2010. Yeah. And uh, so five years after uh, Katrina. So we drove around the outskirts of New Orleans for a while, which is actually what we did a lot of places. A lot of... Um, when we went to cities, we would just drive around the city to just see what the city was like. Yeah, just to scope it out for yeah. whether it's stopping or not. Well, not even just that. Just to, you know, experience To really experience it. it, yeah. We went to uh, the New Orleans Cultural Center, um, which was really cool. I don't know how much you remember that because most of it was closed. Yeah. But then uh, we walked around what you consider... New, New Orleans. Orleans, yeah. The downtown area, Bourbon Street, all that, French Quarter. The first thing that hits you is that it smells. Oh, yeah. The it's... whole thing smells like um, sick. Yeah, it's just dirty. It's a dirty place. It's humid. It's disgusting. It's humid. rotting. The bricks rot when you touch them. Yeah. yeah that was interesting. That was a weird thing. So... But we you... went to a nice restaurant. Yes, we did. So this was one of the things that I insisted on is uh, we had budgets available uh, to make sure that we could eat at least one fine restaurant per uh, major stop. Yeah. Because this was truly about experiencing America. And so one of the things we wanted to do with New Orleans was have good seafood. Yeah, that was that was definitely a, a good time. We had great food. That was a great stop. At least mine was. Was this uh, the year of the BP oil spill or was that the next year? I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. Because, uh, <laughs> Who cares about BP oil spills? Well, it's just that I distinctly remember um, not being able to get local seafood because of that. And I can't remember if it's when I went alone or if that's when I went with you. I want to say it was when you went alone because we had seafood, both of us. Yeah, but we, was it local? That was the thing. I don't remember. I can't remember either. But anyway, we did the typical uh, gumbo thing, hush puppies. Um, the whole nine yards at, at one of the little restaurants there. It was a nice establishment. It wasn't, it wasn't a hole in the wall. No, it was a two-story restaurant. Um, we ate on the bottom floor. It, w it was pleasant. Yeah, absolutely. But Lots of action in the streets. Tons yeah, of people. There were tons of people walking around. There was lots of fun going on. And then Matt had a fun experience with one of the locals. Yeah. Yeah, she... Uh... This was uh, a woman of the night, as you could say, as you could call her. Oh, I thought her. she was just a stripper. No, she definitely was a woman, if you could call her that, of the night. Hmm. With talents. <laughs> I was going to say, are you going to mention the fingernails? They were must have been <laughs> at least two feet long. No, no they were, joke. They were three inches. They no, were about three inches no, long. No, no, they were long because they were like out to here. and that, I mean, okay, that's like almost a foot. So like yeah, by the way, that plays inches. for radio great when you start doing hand gestures. I mean, well, I mean it's you know to convey it to you, um, and then to the listener, yeah, it was like realistically like eight or nine inches long. They, she was tiny. She was tiny. She had long nails, and they had begun to curl down yes. into their you know doing the whole thing. And by the way, this woman was disgusting. Oh my lord, scantily clad, just. The most disgusting woman of the night you can imagine. We're sorry for being so uh, petty at this situation, but this woman was both disgusting physically as well as as a person based on what's about to happen to Matt. She goes 
we're walking by, minding our own business. We're two 18-year-olds just minding our own time, you know, just walking down the street, enjoying the sights of New Orleans. Totally just not paying attention to her. She comes up behind me. Starts talking to us. She started talking yeah, to us Yeah, she started first. talking to us. We didn't mind it because, I mean, we, you know, people talk and we just, you know, yeah. bypass on our way to whatever we're going to. She was standing out in front of a strip club trying to get people to come in. Yes. She grabs me by those talons <laughs> and says, what does she say? Well, what are you, boys into girls or something? What you What's boys? wrong with you boys? Yeah, yeah. Do you like girls? Uh, like, are you, uh, I think she said, are you, are you into girls or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, something to the, that effect. But I distinctly, this is back when you were uh, uh, thinner and frailer. Yes. She manhandled you. <laughs> yeah. She had some weight to throw. When I said she was small earlier, I just meant physically high. I didn't mean in other ways. Yeah, she... Oh my god, that was... <sighs> that was so, something. Yeah. So we got back on the road. Yeah, we we got back in the car. We bailed. We had seen everything we'd seen. We got a good meal in. We enjoyed New Orleans for what it was for two 18-year-olds. Mm-hmm. And we made on our merry way. And we drove to the northern tip of Florida where we spent the night. Yes, Jacksonville. Something like that. I, I assume you're right. Yes. And the next day we started driving down south and there was a key aspect of Florida that I wanted to do. There were two things. Uh, one of the which was the key highway. Uh, you could say it was the key to the trip. <laughs> okay. Um... And the other thing is, I wanted to take an airport ride in the Everglades. Yes. So we started driving around and looking for, uh, we were driving from North Florida to South Florida, and I decided that we should stop when we see a good airboat ride. I think that was on the way back north. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that, because we went around and we went to the western side of Florida to get that boat ride. I'm pretty certain... Okay. Because we didn't, because we were, you made sure like we didn't make it out of Florida before we could hit this. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. Because we saw the place, and we okay. over. but I get. We'll talk about the keys first. One of the big things is that whenever we had to backtrack, we tried to take a different highway. Yeah. So like when you, yeah. So when we backtracked through Florida, we we took a different route. Um, I remember distinctly we were thinking about staying in Miami, and then went no. Yeah, it was just third. It, it was bad it was my my first time in miami and i was, it was like frightening it, w- it was just dirty it was it was infested with the homeless i mean that's i guess that is that politically correct i don't know um there are many homeless people there and the you know and then i don't know you know we were there in the evening we were uh, there in the middle of the night matt no because yes. we got we got to florida city to spend the night at the middle of the night so you think that was the second night in Florida? Because I was pretty certain we spent the, the first night North Florida, and then we were going to spend a middle night, but then we just decided to go all the way to Florida City, Florida. But I, I could be wrong. Something happened. Whatever. This Regardless, was eight years ago. Yeah. Miami was... Not the place to stay. Not the place to stay. And, you know, we weren't about to spend the money required to stay in a, an establishment that would be healthy enough to, you know, properly, you know, stay. Indeed. But we did spend the night in Florida City, and we got a two-night uh, stay in that hotel, because yes. we were going to drive the keys and come back. Yes. So, the keys. Let's talk about the keys. Very, uh, very cool. Yeah. That was, to be honest, probably the best part of the trip was the keys. Yeah, between that and, you know, Washington State. Well, we'll get to that later. Exactly. We'll get to that later. But, yeah, the keys, there was little duck key. Uh, we got to see, uh, I don't think we ever saw any key deer, but we got to see all the signs that say, look out for key deer. Just in case you don't know, listeners, there's a type of deer that lives exclusively on the key islands. So that was something I didn't know. Yeah, that's news to me. Uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to do the key highway, or the reason I wanted to do the key highway, is this is a overwater highway. 
you're it's like a two lane in each direction highway that's like 25 feet above the ocean and it's these crystal clear uh clear azure waters stretching out for miles in all directions and when we were there it was like a dream it was perfect weather yeah just perfect not leaving florida but when we were there no. yeah when we were there it was perfect uh, so we made some stops. Uh, we made a stop at a little biker bar and had some conch. Yes, that was good. So, uh, and key lime pie. We did that at dinner. We did that at dinner too, but we did that there as well. At the I biker remember bar. that. I ordered it and hated it because I, I, I hate limes. There you go. But I, I knew I would, but I just figured I had to. Yeah. Then we stopped at what was formerly someone's tourist trap castle, which, remember that was falling apart, but they had a giant spiny lobster out front. Yeah, huge. I still have the picture. Yep. And there was a really awesome little, uh, like, art market yeah. in there uh, where I bought some uh, stuff. And that was really cool. If you're driving the keys, definitely stop at the giant spiny lobster because there are awesome little shops there yeah yeah 100 percent. and then our next stop was uh, key west yes we parked by an abandoned church i don't remember where we parked but i do know that we walked around and there, there were chickens there were chickens <clears throat> i remember dinner well there's more between um dinner and chickens uh we uh went to the mel fisher gallery Yes, yes, yes. Went to the Mel Fisher Gallery. Uh, Mel Fisher was a diver, I think is a diver, maybe was, who uh, collected uh, silver and doubloons and whatnot yeah. from the wrecked Spanish galleons off the, the coast of the Keys. That's right. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Uh, we walked around. We got to see uh, shaved ice places. Yeah. Um, it's your typical little tourist trap, but it's... It's cool. It's, it's got everything. It's really dude. cool. I, it's it's something I want. I could I could do a million times, and you know, not see everything. You know, it's it, there's always something, and it's it's a cool it's a cool time. It gave me the impression that if you have the opportunity to spend spring break there, you should. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't know about like a college spring break. You should definitely spend a few days in Key West, though. Oh yeah, I mean. I, yeah, I don't remember any, like, party vibes. I remember, like, you know, you could definitely party there, but, like... Oh, it was set up for that. We were just there at a weird time of year. Yeah, and, yeah, it was it was cool, though. So then we went to dinner. Now, if I remember correctly, the dinner place had a really cool name, and I can't remember what it was. I want to say Blue Moon, to be I, honest. I think it was Blue Moon. Because I remember we went to Blue Moon. Like, it had, like... I, th I think it was Blue Moon. I'm pretty sure. Because I'm very, like, every time I think of that place, Blue Moon comes in my head. And yeah, I wasn't I old right. enough to drink. So, obviously, it wasn't because of the beer. Yeah. It was outdoors. It was outdoors. And, and there was, it, like, dancing or karaoke. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say caribou. Karaoke. Um, karaoke, yes. And I remember distinctly, it looked like it was some guy's backyard. Yeah, it was cool, though. It was a it was cool really vibe. Nice. Great food, I think. <laughs> yes, yes, it, it did have good food. I think it was... I, I No, I know that the key lime pie was good there. Okay. So, the key lime pie at the Blue Moon is worth trying. Absolutely. Hashtag not sponsored. Nope. So, we then... Uh, ventured north and we drove uh, across the key highway at night which is not as beautiful as it is during the day no. and we stayed in florida city florida yes the next day we took off and we drove through a tropical storm yep that was fun that was frightening um dear listener here we were in my 2006 dodge charger and we were going on an on-ramp onto this freeway and as we uh, crested the apex of the turn, the car just kept going. <laughs> we no longer had control of the vehicle. Yeah. At that point... Uh, Jesus took the wheel. Yes. We were more boat than car. Yeah. That was frightening. And people always make those jokes about the Dodges, but at this point it was indeed true. Luckily, 
uh, the on-ramp was flat. There was no um, gain in uh, uh, altitude or elevation. And the sides of the on-ramp were gravel. And as soon as we hit the gravel, we got traction and everything was cool. At that point, we drove through the storm and then we went to the um, Native American Reservation? Yes. (coughs) Yes. And because it was only raining... A little bit. When we yes, were yes. I got to play with the, the baby alligators. Mm-hmm. Um, went on that boat ride. They had a bucket of baby alligators. Very weird thing to say, but yeah, they did have I, a bucket. In a, it was actually. I'm sorry. It was a cooler. Yeah. It was a cooler of baby alligators. Yeah, that guy was interesting. Yeah, there was like two people in the entire store, like someone holding down the fort, and then the boat driver. The boat driver was a trip. And so it was just Matt and I on this like boat that was meant to hold like nine people. Yep. Going on a tour of the Everglades. Very, very cool. Definitely recommend that. It hurt because it was raining. Yeah, I forgot about that. And it wasn't like it was raining like fat globs of rain. And when you're traveling that fast and don't have any mask and or jackets or jackets or sunglasses, we had goggles on. They made us put goggles on, remember? My eyes still got wet. I remember my eyes were wet and it hurt. Mm. I don't think I wore goggles. They made me wear goggles. I'm sure they made you wear goggles. I honestly don't remember. He might have just handed them to you. I don't know if I wore them. But it hurt. The, the, I mean, granted, I was 18. But I remember that I was in pain. I was wet. I was hot. And I was sticky. But I was also wet and like cold. It's Florida. It was weird. Oh gosh, we went to somewhere in there. We went to uh, that old Spanish fort. I think that was on the way into Florida. On the. I think we drove through the tropical storm that night. I don't think we drove through the tropical storm during the day because it was dark. It was. I don't. So I think we went to the Spanish fort. At one point, we went to an abandoned (laughs) Spanish fort. Sometime. At some point in our Florida adventures, we went to an abandoned Spanish fort, and that's where I distinctly remembered we had to start turning off the air conditioning, because the air conditioning made it to the point where we couldn't see through the windshield. Remember, the humidity was so strong that it it would fog the outside of the windows, so we had to turn on the windshield wipers during the day without rain. Yeah. Florida, I'm sorry. Florida sucks. Um, through and through, worst state in the union. Not for political reasons, just just sucks. One of the, the jokes I always like to say is California has the best weather, Florida has the best water, but you might as well just go to Hawaii. Never been. Oh. Uh, everything that's good about California, everything that's good about Florida in one. I hear it's humid in Hawaii. Yeah, it is, but not like Florida humid. Anyway... So, uh, yeah, at one point we saw a Spanish fort and we wandered around in the Everglades. We also uh, wandered, we pulled off to the side of the road and wandered around in the Everglades and heard a crocodile. Oh, yes. An alligator growl at us. That was interesting. I remember that distinctly. And we were, like, both poking our heads into the situation a little more than we should have. Yeah, we we stayed uh, a good ways away from the water. I don't think we ever got closer than, like, ten feet, but... No, I wouldn't even say that, but yeah. Yeah, but... Definitely, like, it took us a little too long to figure out what was going on, that there was, like, definitely an alligator growling, yeah. you know, the way they rumble. Yeah. And so, yeah, we went on this uh, airboat ride, oh. um, and they took us to, like, a little floating village. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, because the guy was explaining to us that the Native Americans traditionally lived on, like, these thatch buildings that had pillars in the swamp and then they were raised above the swamp yeah it's kind of like in uh bora bora or something you know those kinds of uh, yeah those uh sweets or if you will and so uh he took us to do that he showed us a uh, an adult alligator that was just like there and asleep yeah. but that was pretty cool yeah uh they were trying to sell dolls didn't buy any no but i bought a pot from the the visitor center yes i like that pot um brought it home for my mom so yeah that was uh that was florida that was a good time 
And then we went north to go to the Boy Scout Jamboree. Yes. And I actually think that's where we're going to cut it for tonight, my friend. Okay. We'll pick up at the Boy Scout Jamboree next week. Sounds good. So, thank you, dear listener, for joining us on this adventure. Um, Until next time, see you out there.